if there is a consult that I need to see in the hospital or around on my patients, I like to do that first thing in the morning. Then I come up to my clinic. I usually see uh, between seven or eight patients in the morning and seven or eight patients in the afternoon. His chest pain and still having shortness of breath and his blood pressure was elevated. Mm -hmm. I'm going in to see Mr. Pilgrim today to go over his test results. Patient with uh, chest pain and shortness of breath. Good morning. Good morning. Your test all came out very good. Is within normal limits, and also your perfusion study that we did looked very good. Here it was 130 over 74. You were coming in for supper or lunch, I guess. So keep doing this, okay? Okay, so I just saw Mr. Pilgrim. He is here after having an echocardiogram done and a nuclear perfusion test performed. Both of those tests were within normal limits, but we did notice that his blood pressure was high. So we're going to start a blood pressure medicine. And it was very helpful that he brought his blood pressure readings in for me. So that would give me a better idea of what medicine I needed to prescribe and also the dosage. My favorite place to be is in the catheterization lab. That is where the fun starts for me. Mm -hmm. This patient's getting a loop recorder so that we can monitor his AFib. I'm hoping that he'll get an ablation done, which is kind of a small burn or cautery into the heart muscle to delete those signals where they can't communicate with the heart. But the loop recorder will be able to tell us if, number one, we need to give him more medicine. Number two, after he gets the ablation done, does he have any more AFib? It's definitely, you know, a good thing to help monitor that for three years. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. We'll get the, get the, get the patient education paper done in a minute here. Try to catch up with you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, went very smoothly. Thank you. A patient would be in the catheterization lab if they need to have an angiogram done. That is the standard procedure where we would put dye into the heart arteries. And then if they have a blockage that can be fixed with a stent, then we would do that at that time also. And then the other procedures that I do are uh, a loop monitor, pacemakers, and the stents in the legs. You never go completely asleep when you're on call. It's just something that you know, you're trained to do that just like with any emergency person as far as a firefighter or a police officer, something goes off, the alarm goes off, or you get a call and it's like, boom, you know, you're in work mode. But that's probably the most difficult as far as, you know, leaving my son or my family and having to be on guard, so to speak, whenever I'm on call and I need to go to the hospital. As I tell some of my patients, okay, I'm fussing at you, but it's because I care. I care about my patients. So it's like, you know, if I come in and I smell smoke on you and you've told me, you know, don't lie to me, I can smell it on you and I'm going to fuss at you if you continue to smoke, that's my job. It's easier not to care because you'll be done, you'll be in and out, you know, and just walk out. But I'm gonna sit down with them, I'm gonna talk to them. I want you to do better, I want you to take care of yourself because I want them to live. I want them to be as independent as possible and I want them to have a wonderful life.